I'm going to create a database. I've already set up Access, so I've got my file there, and you can see that in Getting Started in Access 2003, how to create your file, which you need to do first. So I need to create tables. That's where all the information is going to be stored, and you can have multiple tables for this kind of thing. So the one that I'm going to set up, and all of these principles can be applied to many others. So what I'm going to do, I've got my DVDs and I occasionally lend them out to friends. So what I want to do is create a database to keep track of my DVDs and who's got what. And with that, I also am going to use it with all the DVDs that I get is to have a look at how much I might be spending on a particular genre or which one is my most popular director and things like that. So I'm going to store quite a bit of information in there. So I do need to create some tables for that. Initially, I just want a table to see my friends and another table to store the DVDs. I will then need a table that shows me who's borrowed what. So I will actually have a table for what's been borrowed and which friend has got it. OK, so I'm going to add that stuff in. There is also, and these will be in other tutorials, there are things we can do like validation and also default values, lookups and all sorts of other things in these tables. Other tutorials following on from this will be including queries, so you can find that information, forms which are great for entering information in there, and reports too for actually printing them out. But let's create our first table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on Create Table in Design View. So I'm just going to do that. And you'll see it actually has here this table. It's got a grid. It's got the field name. Effectively, you might think of that as the column heading, a data type. And across here, you'll see it actually says Description. The description, you can type in whatever you like there. It doesn't affect the database in any way whatsoever. It's purely a comment that you can look at later. You'll see here it says it's table one. Down the bottom here, it actually shows me that there's going to be some properties that I can change later. I'm actually going to resize all of this to make this actually a little bit easier to use. I'm going to squeeze that up. There we go. So I'm just going to resize that so you can actually see what's going on. So field names. One of the first things you need to do is set up something that's going to be a unique identifier. This one is going to be my list of friends, and I'm actually going to call it Friend ID. This has to be unique. You'll see that when I click across onto data type, it automatically comes up in text. Now for this, if you were dealing with customers, you might actually have a pre-assigned customer number. I'm not going to assign a number like that to keep track of friends, but the database needs it just so that it can keep track of who's got what on the DVDs. And I'm not sort of worried about what unique item it gives to it. I just want it to be unique. And for that, you'll see I click on this data type drop down box and you'll see there's one here called auto number. As we go through creating this table, we'll get on to some of these others. So I'm going to click on auto number here. I'm now going to put in their name, their first name. That's the field I move across and you see it comes up defaulting to text. If you're putting in things like names and addresses and things like that. They will be text. And you'll see down here that it's got a field size. That field size here by default says 50. It can be anywhere between 1 and 255. If you need more than that, you should choose a memo. However, the only thing is, is it takes longer to search on something that is a memo rather than text. 50 should be OK as a field size for first name. I'm also going to do last name here as well and again I'm just going to leave that as text just so you know that if I did change this to make this bigger this field size that's fine but if you make it smaller you could actually be removing some of that data so just have a little think about that first if in doubt make it 255 that's always the safe option I'm going to put in their address the street the suburb, the county, and that's probably about all I need for that. I'm also going to put something in here as to whether I will lend things to them. So I'm going to have lend. I'm going to choose an option here that says yes, no. 
we've all had it where we've lent something to someone and it's taken ages to get back or it's come back and it's got a scratch on it or broken and uh, you say I'm never going to lend anything to them again. So I just need to think about what other fields I can add here. I can come back and do this later. I'm actually going to leave this table at this point. One thing I do need to do here is I'm just going to click on the friend ID here. I want this to be unique and you should do this on every table. Every table should have some unique identifier at the very least make it an auto number. To do that if you look up here on the toolbar you'll see there is this button here. It's called the primary key and the primary key is something that will be searched on very quickly. It's good for linking to other tables and it also stops duplicates from being entered in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on it and you'll see that that primary key comes up as an indicator just here. If I did change my mind, I could click on another field and then click on that primary key and it would change. But I'm not going to do that. Here is what I want to do. I want to leave it there as the friend ID. I'm going to click on save and I'm going to call it table friends. Now you'll see that I've actually put TBL in front of it, short for table. It's a good way of indicating that something, an object, they call these objects, is actually a table. And you'll see later how that could actually be useful because queries, which are good for extracting information in tables, kind of have a lot of commonality. And it's quite useful to distinguish which ones they are because they can actually have the same names. So this is a good way of just being a bit organized that way. I'm going to click on OK. I'm just going to move this across here just a bit. And you'll see here that there is this button here. This allows me to change views. If I click on it, it's now putting me into my table view. And I can now enter information in here. And if I move that across, you'll see it's got Lend here with a tick box for yes or no. Unticked is obviously no, and ticked is yes. But if I move back here, what you'll see is it's got an auto number. That's what it says there. So if I was to put into this a first name for somebody, at the moment it's not giving it a number at all. But if I put in Marvin and I put in uh, his address, and I don't have a street that's kind of covered in the address. I'm going to put in London and I'm going to have him as Lend being yes. And I can also see that there are some things going on here that I could have done to improve this. One of them is I've got no postcode, which could actually be useful. And then this database can actually be used later for just keeping track of all my friends. I might add in their birthdays and things like that. So we're going to do that. And also something I'm going to look at in another tutorial are default values. I could have had Lend come up automatically as yes, because actually I'm happy in most cases to lend stuff to my friends. It's a bit I start getting phone calls. Oh, Gary, can you lend me something now that you've said it on this tutorial? I'm going to go back to my design view. You'll see it's got like a little geometry set here. If I click on that, it takes me back into here. I'm going to insert a row. So I'm just going to click there in this margin down the side on the gray box, right click and choose insert rows. I'm going to add postcode. That's text. Now postcodes aren't very long. They're probably anything up to about 10, so I'm going to keep that in there. We're going to come back and do something clever here later with input masks to make sure that it fills in the postcode correctly. And whilst I'm here, why not just put in here telephone number? Again, that's going to be text. No, telephone numbers aren't 50 characters long, so I'm going to change that. Oops, let me just fix that. That's incorrect. I'm also, maybe I should put in a mobile, a mobile. Again, that will be text, and I'm just going to change that to 20. Now, the other thing I'm going to add in here, I did mention date of birth. That will give me their birthday. And you'll see on this drop down list, there is actually one where you can put in a date and time. It can be a date or a time or both. So I'm going to choose that one. And for now, 
that is all I need. If I press save and I go back to my view, I can now fill that extra bit of information in. You'll see I've got it across here. I'm going to make this N1 to PP and the telephone number. Oh, you'll see I didn't get that right up there. I'm going to go back and fix that. You now know that I can just by going straight across to here. And the great thing is, is it's saving my records as I go. So let me just fix that. Now, if I don't press save and I press view, it's going to prompt me. Do I want to save it? You can't actually use the table with the changes until you've saved it. You hit yes. And if I come across here now, you'll see that the telephone number has been fixed. So I'm going to put in 0208123. That's fine. We could add more in there. 07555 and so on. And Marvin, I could put in his date of birth. And I'm going to put that in as 241290. Okay, so you can enter a date of birth like that. You'll see that if I move back across here, it's got my little pencil here, which indicates that it's editing. If I move on to another line, it's now changed that, and it's also put this triangle here to indicate what record I'm on. So I could actually start into, so I could actually start entering information here. If I click back there, you'll see again it's coming up with the arrow there. And down below here, it's got an asterisk indicating that that is a new record. Okay, and if I was to look at my, okay, and if I was to look at my navigation buttons down the bottom, these allow me to move to my first record, previous, a specific one by typing it in, next, last, and that would take me to a new record if I actually couldn't see anywhere to put that in. So that those are my navigation buttons down the bottom. Okay, so that has actually allowed me to create a table, but there are many more things I can do, and I'm actually going to put those into other tutorials. So things that you do want to have a look at on the other tutorials are validation rules, input masks, default values, and also I want to be able to do lookups as well. They're just some of the other ones that we'll just take a look at right now.